Greetings, exile. Ever envisioned the thrill of piercing and slashing someone at once? Criminal and traumatic, right? But in Rayclast, it's not a crime. It's a lifestyle. Who cares about the insignificant lives of residents of Rayclast? You've slain countless thousands. What's one more? Patch 3.23 introduced many amazing gems, including Dual Strike of Ambidexterity. This is a transfigured version of Dual Strike, requiring you to dual wield two different weapon types. Your main hand deals more damage, while your offhand determines attack speed. My original plan was to dual wield an axe and sword, with a high attack speed sword in the offhand and a high damage axe in the main hand. However, a problem arose. One of the supports I wanted to use, trauma support, couldn't be used with swords. So how did I fix it? Enter Varunastra, a one-handed sword that counts as all one-handed melee weapon types. This allows us to stack trauma with it. Now let's proceed to discuss the equipment used in this build. But before that, let's examine some of the pros and cons of this setup. This build boasts an impressive defense with 100% spell suppression, a robust 70,000 armor, and maximum resistances, including the often overlooked chaos resistance. This character excels as both a formidable bosser and a reliable mapper. Its adaptability makes it an excellent choice for various in-game challenges. With a staggering 66% life leech of our maximum life, this character can effortlessly sustain itself, ensuring survivability in the face of relentless enemies. Harnessing the power of 10 endurance charges and 10 frenzy charges, this build achieves exceptional physical damage reduction and a substantial boost in overall damage output. Cons. The build's melee nature introduces inherent risks and challenges associated with close-quarter combat. Achieving peak performance requires a significant investment in high-end gear, potentially making it less accessible for budget-conscious players. The build faces difficulties with specific map modifiers like no leech and reduced life recovery rate. Excessive trauma stacking can be fatal for your character. Let's begin by discussing our arsenal. In our main hand, we've equipped Varunastra. This sword counts as all one-handed melee weapon types, allowing it to benefit from modifiers for all one-handed weapons. It is double corrupted with resolute technique and chance to fortify implicits, providing us with a 100% hit chance and a means to fortify ourselves. In the offhand, we've equipped an elder and warlord influenced siege axe, boasting the highest base attack speed among axes. Its prefixes include Physical Damage Over Time Multiplier for Bleeding, Elder Mod, along with Increased Physical Damage Over Time and 4% Increased Attack Speed, Warlord's Mods. As for suffixes, we've rolled 27% Increased Attack Speed, Unveiled Physical Damage Over Time Multiplier, and Crafted Increased Attack Speed when near a unique or rare enemy. Additionally, we've enchanted the axe with 1% increased attack speed per 8% quality mod from the Harvest Bench. Our body armor is a rare triumphant lamella. Its explicits offer substantial armor and evasion, additional physical damage reduction, and spell suppression. We've also crafted some resistances on it. For implicits, we have the perfect tier increased effect of non-curse aura skills, exarch modifier, and the Grand Tier increased effect of malevolence when in the presence of a unique enemy, Eater modifier. In the helmet slot, we've opted for a rare Nightmare Bassinet. Its explicits offer maximum life, spell suppression, and some resistances. Additionally, we've crafted the modifier percent of physical damage taken as fire. For implicits, we have the perfect tier mana reservation efficiency of skills, Eater modifier, and Grand Tier Reduced Mana Cost of Attack Skills, Exarch Modifier. Our gloves of choice are Warlord and Hunter-influenced Apothecary Gloves. These gloves grant us plus one to maximum frenzy charge, enabling strikes against additional nearby enemies and providing a boost to physical damage over time multiplier. Additionally, we've crafted life and reduced effect of chill and shock to aid in achieving elemental immunity. For boots, we utilize Ralakesh's Impatience, these boots ensure a constant benefit of maximum charges without the need to generate them. They also feature a plus one to socketed gems corrupted implicit. 
For the belt, we've equipped a corrupted Rislatha's coil-studded belt with an increased skill effect duration implicit. This belt enhances damage for bleeding and extends the duration for trauma stacking. Our amulet of choice is a corrupted strangle gasp with the implicit malevolence has increased aura effect. We've anointed it with fervor and frenetic, securing plus two maximum frenzy charges, sovereignty for mana reservation efficiency and increased non-curse aura effect, and lastly, infused flesh for recoup, aiding in dealing with self-damage from trauma stacks. One of our rings is a synthesized ring with a plus one to maximum frenzy charges implicit. It boasts attributes, maximum life, flat physical damage, and has crafted reduced mana cost of non-channeling skills, along with some resistances in explicits. We replicate all these benefits using Calandra's touch. Now let's delve into the gems within our equipment, starting with the body armor, housing our primary skill setup. Inside, we have Dual Strike of Ambidexterity, linked to the following supports. Awakened Brutality boosts our damage output. Ruthless grants 100% more damage every third hit. Chance to Bleed enhances damage for bleeding, with a 25% chance to inflict bleeding and additional flat physical damage. Volatility offers increased maximum physical attack damage. Swap this out with Awakened Melee Splash support while mapping for improved clear. Lastly, Trauma support provides flat physical damage per trauma stack. While dual wielding, you gain twice the flat physical damage per trauma stack. Next, in our helmet we have Leap Slam and Ancestral Protector linked to faster attacks, granting faster maneuverability and more attack speed. Blood and Sand, providing us with the Blood and Sand stances. In our gloves, we have our cast when damage taken set up. Here we have Val Molten Shell and Vulnerability linked to cast when damage taken and life tap support. They're automatically cast when we take enough damage and costs life instead of mana. Moving on to the gems in our boots. We have Grace, enhancing our evasion rating. Malevolence, providing more damage over time and skill effect duration. Pride, causing enemies to take more physical damage. All of these are linked to a level 4 enlightened support. Since all these gems are in our boots, their level is raised by 1, turning our level 4 enlightened into level 5. Lastly, in our main hand, we have War Banner, causing enemies to take increased damage, Vengeance, which triggers automatically when we take damage, and Herald of Purity, providing us with more physical damage. In our off hand, we have Blood Rage, offering increased attack speed, Berserk, providing us with more attack speed and less damage taken linked to life tap support. Let's review our skill tree, focusing on keystones, masteries, jewels, and cluster jewels used in our build. Starting with keystones, Crimson Dance allows us to stack bleeding up to eight times. Iron Reflexes converts all evasion rating into armor. Val Pact doubles our maximum life leech but removes life regeneration. Mage Bane provides spell suppression chance based on our dexterity, aiding in reaching the spell suppression cap. Moving on to Masteries, Bleeding Mastery. We gain 3% damage over time multiplier for bleeding per endurance charge. Axe Mastery, attacks with axes and swords grant rage. This mastery can be changed to enemies killed by our hits or destroyed during mapping. Leech Mastery, 10% of Leech is instant. Life Mastery, 15% increased maximum life if we have no life modifiers on our armor. Armor and Evasion Mastery, increased armor and evasion per endurance and frenzy charge. For jewels, we utilize Unnatural Instinct, placed in a jewel socket near Stamina, granting 16% maximum life, 30% chance to bleed, 5% faster bleeding, 6% all resistances, and 16% increased armor. It also has a 2% increased reservation efficiency of skills corrupted implicit. Very large thread of hope, placed in a jewel socket near savagery, allowing access to seasoned swordplay, vitality void, disciple of unyielding, and disciple of slaughter without needing to path to them. It also has a reduced effect of chill on you corrupted implicit. Impossible Escape with Supreme Ego allows access to Charisma, Taste for Blood, and a small Reservation Efficiency node. Arena Challenger from Gladiator, using Flesh and Flame Jewels. 
that which was taken, grants chance to suppress spell damage and chaos resistance per endurance charge. Watcher's Eye provides damage over time while affected by malevolence and spell suppression while using grace. Rare Jewel grants percent increased maximum life, allows us to cap our bleeding chance, and has increased mana reservation efficiency of skills. Two large cluster jewels. With axe and sword attack deals increased physical damage with hits and ailments. Since Varunastra counts as all one-handed melee weapons, it gains twice the benefits from these clusters. For example, if a small node grants 12% increased damage, then in the case of Varunastra, it will grant 24% increased damage instead. For Ascendancy, we choose Bane of Legends, upon completing the normal labyrinth, Brutal Fervor, obtained from the Cruel Labyrinth, Endless Hunger, acquired from the Merciless Labyrinth, Lastly, Masterful Form, attained from the Uber Labyrinth. For the Wildwood Ascendancy, we select Warden of Magi. Starting with Coated Blade, this enables the use of Oak Branch Tincture, which grants Culling Strike, increases our strike range, and causes enemies to take additional damage while they are on low life. Next, we take Intensifying Suffusion, which amplifies the effect of our tinctures per empty flask slot. Then, Nature's Concoction. Lastly, we opt for Detect Evil. Choosing Warden of Magi is my personal preference. The main reason I chose this ascendancy was to acquire the strike range from tinctures. Without enough strike range, the attacks felt underwhelming. Alternatively, if preferred, you can opt for Primal Huntress as your Wildwood Ascendancy. In this case, look for charms that provide, explode on killing bleeding enemies, spell suppression, no reservation for banner skills, instant leech and adrenaline upon reaching low life. For Pantheon, we select Soul of Brine King as our major god and Soul of Garukan as our minor god. I do realize that this build is quite expensive, and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone in SSF or on a budget. However, if you're still interested in trying it out, I've created a separate POB for SSF and budget players. If you find the video helpful, please consider subscribing by striking that subscribe button.